Hello, um, my name is Simon. I'm a mathematician. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to present you um, my portfolio project. Um, it's about um, teaching math and physics and use your self-made uh, videos. Um, why is this, uh, what, what's the issue? What is the problem? Um, when I studied mathematics, um, I made uh, two interesting and a bit uh, shocking observations. Uh, first was um, when I told uh, people I'm studying math, they said, uh, ah, oh, um, so you will become a teacher. So keep this in mind. Second, I worked, uh, had a side job as a um, private tutor. And the most frequent question while tutoring was, um, why do I need it? this where where do i need this stuff so these these two these two things um show a, um a catastrophic mindset um mathematics is just a tool for torturing yeah you you learn it to teach and to torture um other students um yeah why why is this so and why is this um an issue um, <clears throat> yeah, why is this an issue? We have uh, a shortage of, um, of uh, skilled workers. So and this is uh, widely known. Um, so you need um, math and physics um, to study more sophisticated or sophisticated stuff like, like engineering and so on. Um, but, but let's stick with the teachers. There are, um, there's a shortage of teachers. There are way too few teachers with way too, uh, too little time for teaching, um, for teaching math. Um, yeah. And this may end uh, or may lead to um, a vicious circle. Teachers have no time for teaching. Students are getting bored. They are bored by math, so they get even more bored. And uh, that's the first uh, vicious circle. Bored, bored students are not really easy to teach, so I, I know this. Um, yeah, this leads to a lack of knowledge. This leads to um, a skills shortage. And we uh, have too few, too few uh, uh, teachers. And yeah, the circle closes. Um, Yesterday, in the news, you could read um, the reactions to an educational, uh, to the uh, newest educational report. A teachers, teachers Association warn of a looming national emergency. So this is just not just a problem of bored students. This is a really, a really an issue. This is um, this is a problem. So where did I? Um, where do I think can we can we um, work on this problem? It's on the teachers, no time, and students are bored. Um, topic. There, I tried to, um, uh, yeah, not just me. I tried to um, to do more uh, um, more things that students are really interested in. So not just formulas, but give them uh, give them exercises that may have to do uh, with their real world experience. That's the moment when text assignments uh, uh, were invented. Um, this is a solution, I don't know. Um, they are still a bit boring. So two trains, A and B, and we all know this. Um, so this is still not that interesting. Um, what can we do? Um, Yeah. In the second text assignment, we see uh, we talk about a parabola. So I really like the parabola. So it's um, the first. Yeah, <laughs> it's the first nonlinear function, and and the first um, first mathematical object um, that you can 
uh, where you can um, uh, try and um, experience um, um, interesting things in, in, in math. So it's a non-trivial non uh, de derivation and so on. So take this and um, and have in mind we want to we want to draw connections between the learning content and the world in which students live in. Though so it's not um, a by accident that I uh, took sports here because uh, <laughs> the laws of of motion and parabola and sports um, you can imagine there are these connections. We can maybe we can use these connections to make um, math and physics more um, more accept acceptable for students. So um, yeah, parabola. Uh, this is me throwing a handball. The first time uh, since um, I think twenty years, um, and. Uh, yeah, um, the idea is to have um, an easy tool that that connects, that draws a connection between you doing some cool stuff like throwing a handball and you learning uh, about uh, parabolas. There are already uh, some tools making this possible, but um, they are very time consuming and tedious. You have to draw these points by hand. Some already have uh, um, features that automate some of these, uh, of these uh, tedious tasks. I tried uh, a few, few are uh, expensive. Um, yeah, so why don't I write? my own or develop my own um, tool for doing this. What uh, do we need or what do we want to have? We want to have um, an application that gives us um, an analysis of uh, what is happening there, what is happening physically um, when I do something. So I use my smartphone, kids and students have smartphones and uh, I make a, a small video clip of my performance, um, running, jumping, throwing a ball, send it to um, the program and uh, get the analysis and get the parabola, um, the values, whatsoever. So how is it working? How do we uh, go there? What do we need? Um, First of all, we need uh, object detection. Object detection and object tracking. Um, they've made, um, uh, yeah, how to say? Um, there are mighty tools um, working very good uh, um, in object detection and uh, object tracking. <clears throat> um, yeah, and I try to tell you a bit about how this works and how I use these techniques um, uh, to build a tool that um, gives us a, a glance of the physics um, around us. Um, first of all, object detection. You can use, uh, or I used uh, YOLO, which is a state of the art um, in object detection, can detect uh, multiple objects at the same time. Um, detection object of objects is just uh, one part. The second part is object tracking. So a video consists of, um, uh, of frames, um, of a list of frames. And um, if I have detection on each frame, um, I need to associate these detections to uh, the objects I want to track. And this is what we call object tracking. Object tracking um, uses a technique um, that's called uh, Kalman filtering. And Kalman filtering, and that's the interesting thing, um, already uses um, these, these uh, kind of information um, from, from previous frames um, like motion. So how is it, 
how's uh, the frame moving and with the information how is it moving um, it makes a prediction where it will be in the next image where one detection is probable to be detected in the next frame. Um, if there is a detection and it's close enough to the predicted, uh, to the predicted uh, uh, position, then it's very likely to be the object we want to track. If there are more than one, then we use the Kalman filtering with its probabilities um, to decide which is more probable to be the object we want to, uh, we want to detect. Um, I think this is a moment where I shall show you a video how it uh, might work. Throwing a ball and um, you can imagine it's uh, a bit hard uh, to detect uh, um, this ball and that's one of the um, issues was not possible for me to, to solve in this time to make this tiny ball. Uh, here you can see how Kalman filter uh, works. This is very very interesting to see. You see in the, on the right side the sports ball and its ID 11 and sometimes it loses uh, this ID um, or it loses the, it loses the, um, the de de detection. It loses the detection um, <laughs> but after a few frames it detects it again and because the, uh, the movement is um, is encoded in the Kalman filter, the association um, is kept. So even when it's occlus uh, occluded, um, or even if there's an occlusion. Now, um, we have now the uh, object and its, um, its place in the image. And, it's, uh, and we have the tracking, so we know how it's moving. And the next step is to have a regression. Um, to uh, have a smooth function um, and to see what's uh, what's most probable probably going on there um, what kind of motion is it um, is it oscillating is it a movement is it an accelerated movement um, yeah we see the yeah the difficulties uh, we saw um, the object tracking is much dependent on the good object detection <clears throat> which can be uh, improved. Okay, um, what did I do? Uh, what, is the, what is the workflow, um, I imagine? Um, students, or in this case me, um, had made a video clip of a sports performance. Then I used YOLO detection on each frame to, um, to make uh, the de detections of, uh, of the object. Um, the sort algorithm with a Kalman filter is the next step and uh, makes the object tracking. So we know, um, with, uh, yeah, we have the idea, ID of one object, um, or of the objects and their movement. Um, next step is um, we have to decide which uh, trajectory is, interested, uh, is, is interesting, which tra trajectory are we interested in. Um, if we have decided for the sports ball, uh, for example. I did a Fourier analysis and regression. And um, uh, yeah. And then finally, you can see a trajectory with uh, a velocity and its vectors. So by now, we have the step. We make a video. We put it in the uh, physics AI analysis. We have to do some steps on our own, but not that much. Some steps, we have to decide which uh, object we want to track. And as a result, we get, um, we get a regression curve. We can uh, decide so how, how, um, how exact the regression should be, how close to the measurement, or uh, how close to the ideal parabola. Depending on that, we can then, yeah, do some exercises uh, for the students. So this is um, the, the result from uh, throwing um, a ball. Maybe we get the last time uh, watch a video. And this is uh, the last, uh, 
the final output. Yeah, we have now, we see a flying ball. We have a velocity a vector. We have a velocity vector. We, um, yeah, can do our calculations uh, on it. We can, um, we can do exercises out of it. Um, there's much math inside just the parabola. It is a function. Um, uh, you, you can see it as a function of time. You can see x, the x position as a function um, uh, of time. You can see the y position as, the, as a function of x. Um, so there are lots of things you can you can do with it, and you have the connection uh, to the real uh, world um, students are living in. And so the problem of creating connection between math and physics and learning and uh, students' activities though is is solvable. We can do this. The required effort for teachers can be reduced drastically by using um, this, this framework. Yeah, and uh, as a final result, the um, frequency of what do I need it for may decrease. So thank you for your attention.